Welcome back friends. Now that we have taken an overview of the list interactions, let us now start building up our shopping cart. I'm going to do this again in, in a step-by-step -step manner. What we are going to look at this video, uh, look at in this video is basically the case why, where the item that the user has selected is not already a part of the shopping cart. First, let's see this and there are multiple steps to be done. You know, once we have seen this, uh, first let's see what we mean by this. Uh, Remember when the game starts, the shopping cart is completely empty. Let's say user purchases three units of milkshake. We want to add milkshake to this list. Shopping cart and you know we want to add say for example three to this shopping quad. Now let's say the user comes in and says he wants to purchase five units of eclairs. Now again, I will treat this as a new item because this list doesn't already contain the uh, item eclairs which means that as far as this list is concerned, we are going to have to add a new item here and also a new item over here. Contrast this with a situation where eclairs is already present in the list and user said, I want to purchase eclairs. In that case, we are not adding any new item. We are just changing something in the shopping quad. So, you know, what we are dealing with in this video is just this gray portion because this itself involves a lot of steps and is good to go in a slow, systematic and a step-by-step -step manner. The first question that comes up is that when the user wants to say purchase something, we must get user to tell us how many units of that particular uh, item the user wants to purchase. Let's do that first and then we get into the list part of it, right? Uh, so like I said here, if the order is less than equal to five, which means user has entered, let's say uh, one, two, three, four, five, then the user wants to purchase something um, and we have written this print user shopping. So I'm going to just say, you know, for example, I can say print, you know, I want to tell user what is it that you have selected so that there's a kind of like, you know, user uh, kind of confirms what we have done. So you selected. Now notice that I could, you know, uh, basically I'm, the user is selecting from this list called menu. So if the user selects one, then user has selected milkshake. User has selects two, then, you know, user has selected ice cream and so on and so forth. So probably I can write in a slightly complicated manner. I can write something like, you know, say if order is equal to one, then I can say user selected, you know, say, say you selected, uh, for example, and I can write this here, milkshake, uh, say milkshake, uh, let's say else, or I can write, use an elif in fact, so I can say elif, say order is equal to two, then, you know, again, I can use this statement here and I can say you selected, say, ice cream and so on and so forth. But you can imagine that this code is going to become quite repetitive and it is not needed to be done this way because if we did this, then we are really not making use of the lists that we have created. Remember, these items, milkshake, ice cream, chocolate, eclairs, cupcake and so on are already a part of the list called menu which means that all we really need to do is to just index that list. Now, how do we index that is a little bit important because remember list indexing starts from, uh, you know, zero. So if I were to do, let's say menu, uh, you know, say let's say I uh, run this code maybe once, right? It comes here and I just immediately say exit this. Now, if I say menu, menu is this much, uh, you know, is the entire list. So menu, for example, zero, and we have seen this before is milkshake uh, menu, one is ice cream and so on and so forth. However, the user is answering, uh, user is requesting say one, two, three, four, five, because that's more natural to us. But the important bit here is that if I were to use order into an index, which means the variable order, which is an integer, remember I've converted this to an integer here. Uh, you know, uh, previously you talked about this. So if we use this itself to index the list, then it becomes much simpler because all I can do, I do not need this if elif statement. I can just put something like print, uh, you know, print and you can say uh, you selected and what did you select? Well, you selected, you know, um, don't need a space here. I'm going to say menu order minus one. And why this would work is because remember order is going from one, two, three, four, five, which means order minus one will be zero, one, two, three, four. And that's really what's going on because I can index into the list and then I can have my user, uh, you know, input being mentioned here. Let's just see this working for a moment. So let's say I say, you know, say I say two, which means I'm looking for ice cream and it says user shopping, you selected ice cream. 
So, you know, I select ice cream and then again it asks me because that's the only code. So let's say I this time I say three. It says you selected chocolate. And why did that happen? Because I'm indexing into the list menu square brackets order minus one. Now that this is done, we want to know how many units of this particular quantity the user wants to purchase. But once again, remember, as I mentioned before, our units must be integers because you can have one unit, two units, three units. You know, we uh, there's no way I can have, let's say, X, Y, Z units or say even 1.5 units. So what I'm going to do, something similar to what I done for order here, I'm going to say, for example, I'm just going to create a variable called quant is equal to int. Uh, I must change, uh, you know, the user's input to an integer as we discussed before. So int input, how many units do you wish to per, uh, you know, to say per chase? And I can have a question mark here. And again, I can give a backslash n so that the user can enter this in the next line. It looks a little bit more intuitive. So now what's going to happen is that I am going to ask my user after the user says that he wants to purchase something. Uh, you know, so let's say it says one to five to select a food item. Let's say user says four. Four is going to mean user selected eclairs. But now I want to know how many units do you wish to purchase? It's asking me a question. So let's say I say six. Uh, let's say now again, I'm just going to press six here to exit. Now this six was to give my you know variable quant. In fact, I think that should be available now for me. So if I look at QUAT, yes, it's in these six, right? So which means that this variable here is the integer version of the user's answer. And obviously the user it enters something that is cannot be converted to integer, it's going to result in an error. Now we know how many units a user wants to purchase. I think there's a small typo here. I'm going to fix that. So user is going to you know to purchase. Now we need to do something interesting with respect to the lists because now comes the question whether this item that the user has selected is it already a part of the shopping cart or is it not a part of the shopping cart which means that somehow we have to figure out are we in case one or say case two what we can do is that we have to just look at the list shopping cart and see if that particular item is part of the list shopping cart. Now, how we do this in Python is that we can have us, we can use this statement called in. It's actually quite simple. I can say if say menu order minus one in shopping say cart, right? So what this means is that, uh, you know, so, you know, here I'd say, say shopping cart, if the uh, you know, and I must have a, uh, the colon there. Okay, remove this. And now I must again indent. So notice I must go back and indent this code because this if has to be the statements have to be inside, you know, uh, the uh, let's say the um, uh, indentation. So I can just write here something like uh, repeated order. Let's say repeated, repeated uh, selection. Let's say just for our benefit, we'll write this. And then I can say else, which means there's a new selection. So I can write, for example, just for now, I can go and say new selection right and we'll see we'll see what to do with these but it's good to go in small increments and see this code working now again remember the indentation this whole thing is inside if order is less than five this entire if becomes relevant if order is less than five when user wants to shop so now i have gone and try to see my list shopping cart and i want to see if it's a repeat selection or it's a new selection now this particular statement will probably look a little bit confusing but really you should not get confused here because we have a very good example coming in from scratch now remember in scratch there was a block in lists which said list contains some item right so what i have done here is to open up your fortune teller game and you might recall that you know the the wizard used to allow us to ask questions till we repeated them questions. So, you know, basically if you repeated, the user used to get angry. And how did the wizard figure out that the question has been repeated? Because wizard used to store our questions in a list. And whenever we asked a new question, wizard used to check if, for example, your question contains answer. Now, if it did, it did something. If it did not, it did something else. Exactly the same thing is going on here, uh, where we have, you know, where we have said that if Menu order minus one. Remember, this is the item. This is the you know user's order as we just saw previously. If menu order minus one is present in shopping cart, then it's a repeat selection. Else, it is a new selection. Now, like I said earlier, we are first going to deal with the new selection. 
and because it's a little bit uh, i think a little bit easier to understand so what we are going to do is that if this is a new selection then we will have to add this to the shopping cart remember my my scheme here you know i can show you the scheme once again uh, over here for example in either of these situations because milkshake had not been selected previously because eclairs had not been selected previously i must now add them to a list that already exists and the way we do that in python is to use a command called append now append really means in english to put something in the end and that's exactly what we are going to do so we are going to say uh, you know in the else portion it's a new selection so i'm going to say shopping say shopping cart dot append and i'm going to put menu order minus one now again you know you if you can imagine that menu order minus one is what i've ordered so if you wanted to be more explicit i could have said i could have used it if else here if order was one append milkshake if order was two append ice cream and so on and so forth but we have already seen that there's no point in doing that because we have a list called menu so i'm going to say shopping cart dot append menu order minus one it has to be minus one because indexing starts from zero and also in the shopping quant i am going to say you know in the shopping quant i'm going to append the quantity that the user wants now really this you know looks a little bit complicated but really it should not trouble us because uh, we will i'll just give you an analogy back from scratch you know there was an item there was a block which we were quite familiar with which was that add something to a list and that used to basically add at the end of the list right now exactly same thing is going on this append function is going to add something to the end of this list so append is just like add nothing to get confused because we have seen this so many times now what's going to happen is that my shopping cart will start to evolve whenever i make a new selection and let's see this working uh, for ourselves let's say i start playing first in the beginning remember shopping cart is empty which means whatever i put in it's going to get into a new selection so let's say i do put in one it asks me user shopping you said to milkshake how many units do you want to purchase so i say i want to purchase five units it tells me it's a new selection yes it is a new selection because the shopping list had been empty now let's say i want say item two which is uh, so ice cream ask me again how many units you want to purchase i say five let's say now i say item four this time it says you selected eclairs how many units you want to purchase let's say i say five and now let's say i want to say six to end my shopping uh, sh let's say shopping is complete now at this point if i were to go and display my shopping cart notice i will get milkshake milkshake ice cream and eclairs and why did i get this because first the user selected milkshake i reached here which was order was one menu order minus one was milkshake and hence in this shopping list which was empty shopping cart which is empty i added this item called menu order minus one so milkshake got added i also added so if i look at the shopping shopping quant as well i have got 555 because i think i selected five units for everything but in all these cases what was going on is that first i had milkshake five next i came in and said okay look ice cream i need five units of this eclairs i need five units of this so this list is really building up like we had shown in the diagram earlier using this append function like i said this append is exactly same as the add item to a list in scratch and hence you know uh, as always go back to your projects where you use that in fact fortune teller is a good example there are also other projects we have done where we have used this uh, you know use that particular uh, function uh, that particular block go back and relate to those items those let's say examples and you will find that this is very logical and in fact it's not all that alien either the syntax is list dot append the item that we want to add and you have seen that already happening here uh, like i said earlier shopping cart has to be all strings because the the items that are being added in shopping cart are basically coming from the menu which is all strings and shopping quant will be integers because this quant remember this variable quant we have converted this to an integer over here i hope this has made it clear we'll come back in the next video to look at how do we handle this repeated selection but uh, till then go step by step in this lots of steps we have done um, you know be systematic and it will all fall in place take care thank you so much bye bye